Hello again, I'm John Turzak, and today I have a lesson for you about how to reconstitute and cook dried mushrooms. Today I have an ounce of porcini mushrooms and an ounce of dried shiitake mushrooms. And I have about three cups of water I just took off the fire that was boiling. Now we're going to set these in there until they get nice and soft, and then we're going to cook them in a little bit of butter and garlic a little bit later. We're going to time elapse these uh, shots, and this one is probably going to take about 30 to 45 minutes. So we're going to let it soak first, and then I'll be back in about 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll put them on a fire and cook them up a little bit, and we'll talk about that for a second. This is an easy skill video, but a necessary one if you want to use dried mushrooms, which have an absolute expanded amount of flavor compared to a regular mushroom. Just like anything that's dried, it's concentrated in its flavor. It's concentrated enough in this case that we're even going to use the water that we soak them in because it's absorbing so much flavor from them in a later use for a sauce. So I'll see you in about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, the mushrooms have been soaking in the water here for about an hour, 15 minutes, an hour and a half, something like that. So they're soft enough to take them to the next stage right now. I'm going to get them out of the water. I'm going to wring them out a little bit here so we don't... I tasted this water and it tastes like the dried mushrooms. And I'm going to use this water in another video uh, that I'm shooting today, which is how to make mushroom Madeira sauce. And so one of the things that happens when you soak these mushrooms is sometimes there's parts of it, like the stems, that stay hard. I'm going to pull them off of there or cut them off you know, unless I think they're okay. This one's a little tough also. I'm going to take it off. I'm heating up a pan in the back. Now these uh, porcini mushrooms have no stems on them, so they're all good to go. So the next question is, how do I want to cut them? Uh, and it depends on what you're going to use them for. You can mince this and put it into your rice dish, or you can uh, sprinkle it into, put it into a soup. You can, in my case, I'm using this for a sauce. So the question I have to ask myself and how I'm going to cut them today is, what size do I want the pieces of mushrooms in the sauce? So when I ladle the sauce onto the food or the plate, what do I want it to look like? And that's why, that's how I'm going to make my decision in terms of how to cut the mushrooms. So in my case, I want the mushrooms kind of sliced like this. The shiitakes. We got some tough stems here, which I'm going to cut off. Let me get another knife here. I can mince those stems, which I'll probably end up doing, and add them to the sauce too. Because when they're minced, they won't be too hard. This way I'm going to have slices of shiitake mushroom in my sauce later. This is a great mushroom preparation to use as an addition to something like wild mushroom soup, wild mushroom chowder, etc., which is all good. And we will be making those in this course, by the way. So, okay, so there's the sliced shiitakes. Now the porcinis, I'm going to cut these more like minced because they're not physically suited for slicing per se because they wouldn't have any appearance of being a sliced mushroom because they're so disproportionately, uh, physically, they don't look like a mushroom anymore. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this hot pan. I'm going to put, it's very hot, I'm going to put a little bit of butter in it. I'm going to put all the mushrooms in here. Let's get these stems minced up. We'll throw them in there while we're at it.
And I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Now, the, what, what I'm doing here is I'm making these what I would call tender enough to eat. A little bit of salt. We'll put a little bit of garlic in here, only because I know what I'm going to use my mushrooms for, and this garlic belongs in them, because ultimately I'm going to put garlic in the sauce anyway. Now this mushroom liqueur, as I would refer to this, I'm going to use, and I'm going to save and use later when I make my sauce. But for right now, we're going to take these mushrooms and put them on the fire, and I'm going to add a little bit of white wine to this, about a cup, cup and a half. Let's finish it off. I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to simmer these for a little while. Probably another 10 minutes. I'm going to fast forward this video for about 10 minutes. Then we're going to have some finished mushrooms. And at that point, what you do with the mushrooms is your business. I'm trying to show you how to reconstitute and then cook them. Get them ready to kind of do whatever you want to do with them. Um, so I'll fast forward this for, for about 10 minutes. And I'll see you then. Okay, I've been simmering the mushrooms about 40 minutes. A little bit of white wine, I added a little bit of chicken stock to it, and now they're nice and tender, and they're cooked, and we have some more juice here. Let's just pour this on here for a second, so we can get a good look at it. Now, I've completed this particular skill video. I'm going to add a couple of comments to this now. What I've shown you is how to reconstitute them in warm water, let them soak, and then cut them, and then cook them some more. And I cut them in accordance with how I wanted mine cut. Um, if Remember, why are you using dried mushrooms instead of fresh mushrooms? Let me just remind you, in case I didn't so far, which is that the concentrated flavor of the mushroom exists in the dried mushroom and not in the fresh mushroom. Just like so many things like dried tomatoes, they're much more concentrated, strong tomato flavor. This is the same thing. So you use these in the same way when you think about stuff like the difference between a dried apricot and a fresh apricot. There's a limit to how much dried apricot you're going to add to something to enhance it with an apricot flavor. It's the same thing with these mushrooms. You don't serve a pile of these on a crouton as a canopy because it's almost too concentrated. So you use this as a flavor additive. Now I could mince these and mix them into turkey stuffing if I wanted. That might be a way of which I could make a mushroom flavor turkey stuffing because it has the power to do that, these kinds of mushrooms. Um, I'm going to use this in mushroom sauce, but at this point right here, they can be stored in the fridge or frozen and then take them and taken out and used at will by the cook who made these for any variety of things. So if you happen to have a half a pound of dried mushrooms that you bought or encountered or you want to cook and store and save and use for another time, do this treatment to them, put it away, and then take them out as you need them and use them. So there you have it. How to reconstitute and cook dried mushrooms. Get a chance to taste these, go for it. They're delicious.